Hey guys, I'm very, very sorry. Uh, sorry, let me just talk here. Uh, I'm very, very sorry for the first part and the fact that it doesn't have video, so you can't see the words on the screen. Hopefully, a lot of you have books, so you can read along with me anyway. Um, but to anybody who's just watching the video, I am really sorry for that. Um, but we have video now, so hopefully I've salvaged this entire audiobook for that. So anyway, let's continue. The robotics classroom was in a mostly deserted wing of the school. Jessica knew the wing still had storage rooms that, was, that were accessed from time to time, but the classroom that robotics was in was the only one being used. The school once had a very active art program and dance program in this wing, but budget cuts had shut down those curricula. Money was funneled into robotics and computer programming instead of the arts, and even that wasn't enough money. The reason their class was using old donated animatronics was because there was no funds to buy state-of-the-art animatronic parts. The classroom didn't get much attention from janitorial or maintenance either. It was usually far too dusty to suit Jessica. But Jessica didn't care either way about the arts or robotics. She wasn't particularly good at computers, painting or dance. Her forte was form, not function. Oh, and that reminded her, maintenance should do something about the function of her locker. The robotics classroom was a large warehouse-like room with tall ceilings guarded by exposed metal beams. The floors were covered with rubberized interlocking squares and the metal work tables were bright red. Grey pegboards lined the walls of the room, and every robotics part you could think of hung on hooks from these boards. The room was far too industrial to suit Jessica's tastes, but she tolerated it like everyone else. Even though robotics was a required class for sophomores, and many of Jessica's classmates groused about it, she secretly didn't mind it. Most of the time she didn't really understand what she was doing, but she did think it was fun. And it played into her other strength, control. Of course, she liked to control best when she was controlling people, but controlling machines seemed to be a natural extension of that. Even with all her beauty and social skills, Jessica never got everything and, any and everyone around her to act as she wanted them to. There was always someone who was saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. Take the two red-headed red morons, for instance. With her class popularity and physical presence, she, stood, she should have been able to wrap... Uh, Mindy and Cindy around her manicured finger. That they didn't afford her the appropriate amount of reverse reverence was like having a splinter stuck just under the skin. She hated when that happened. She hated Mindy and Cindy even more. The room's red table sat in rows, three tables in each of the five rows. Jessica and Brittany took their seats at the middle table in the third row, not too close to the front so they wouldn't appear to be geeks not too close to the back where they'd be surrounded by outcasts. They always sat where their vaulted status could be recognised. The robotics teacher, Mr Thornton, a short 20-something man with bird-like features, beady eyes, a pointed nose and fine brown hair, strode into class and set a stack of books and schematics on his desk. Jessica shook her head at the red and gold diamond patterned sweater vest that hung loosely over Mr Thornton's narrow chest. Between the vests he always wore and his thick, black-rimmed glasses, Mr Thornton was the poster boy for geeks everywhere. Mr Thornton looked askance at the class, like, like, as he always did. He had a little trouble with eye contact. He never faced straight at the class, and when you talked to him directly, he focused his gaze about a foot above your head. Jessica thought that was sort of endearing, in a lovable nerd kind of way. Talk among yourselves for a few minutes. The shipment just came in, and I need to supervise the... He trailed off and disappeared into the workroom adjacent to the robotics classroom. That was something else Mr Thornton did. He frequently left his sentences unfinished. It was weird. Once, Brittany suggested that Mr Thornton might be an animatronic, one with advanced programming and a minor glitch that prevented him from completing his communications. Jessica thought that was hysterically funny. What do you want... To... What do you want to do about them? <laughs> Brittany asked. Jessica blinked and looked at her friend. What? About who? Brittany nodded toward Mindy and Cindy, who were sitting in front of row. Jessica looked at the backs of the two redheads. Mindy and Cindy had only joined the class a couple weeks before. Apparently they were part of some gifted class that did robotics competitions. They even worked out of the robotics club, uh, meeting early each morning before the school day began. And now they were auditing the sophomore class. Little freaks. 
Jessica opened her mouth to answer her friend, but b- before she could, a loud clattering and thumping accompanied Mr. Thornton back into the room. The racket came from the wheels of a cart he was pushing in front of him. The cart was piled with things that looked like they should have been either in old sci-fi movies, amusement parks, or circuses. Momentarily forgetting Mindy and Cindy, Jessica sat up straight and leaned forward to see what was on the cart. She spotted a couple of silver robot skeletons, vaguely man-shaped grey robots that looked like aliens, and several mechanical animals. Many were dog and cat shaped, and few looked like a miniature barn animal and exotic animals. Very interesting. She spotted a cow, a horse, an orangutan, a black panther, a flamingo, and a huge pink pig. Huge pink pig. Pig, pig, pig patch. <laughs> pig patch is back. The pig was the only life-size thing on the cart. Ooh, okay. Interesting information. The cow, horse, and panther were about the same size as the dog and cats. All the mechanical animals looked like they were designed to stand on their back of two feet. And... Most wore some piece of clothing or accessory, reminding her more of sports team mascots than real animals. Jessica saw a couple bow ties and vests, two feather boas, short pants with suspenders on the flamingo. Oh, that's so cute. A bowler hat, striped socks, and a pair of red gloves. The pig was the closest to being fully dressed. It wore what looked like frilly waitress uniform in the shade of pink, just a little darker than its fuzzy pig, piggy skin. Atop its broad hat, uh, head sat a pillbox shaped pink cap with a ruffled edge. Other than the outfit and the fact that it had fuzzy pink hands instead of hooves, it looked a lot like a real pig. Okay class, let's get started on today's Mr. Thornton said. (laughs) He gestured at the cartload of robotic characters he'd just dragged in and grinned sideways at the class. What we have here is a vintage animatronic bonanza. He uttered one of his rare laughs. Jessica winced. She was glad his laughs were rare. He sounded like a tortured mouse when he laughed. Mr. Thornton sobered. None of these animatronics function at the moment, but every one of them is capable of... Your partner up, and each partnership will get one of these to work on, so it will be... Okay. You'll have two jobs to do. (laughs) First, do whatever is needed so your animatronic will function as it's supposed to, and second, program it so it performs some specific task. You will then either have it perform for the class or videotape it if the function is done outside of the class where we can't. Each one of these has something to teach us, so let's... (laughs) This, This book is just a big meme, I swear. I swear this story is just a big meme. He moved over to the car and pulled out one of the small dog robots. It wore a yellow dog sweater. This dog is an example of an animatronic that uses servos, and we we all know that servos are controlled by... Of course, this is why it's in the book. This is why it's in the book, because it has useful information and we're not going to be told about it. (laughs) Brilliant. Mr. Thornton uh, looked out over the top of the class and pushed his glasses up onto his nose. Anyone? Mindy raised her hand. Servos are controlled by sending an electrical pulse through the control wire. Good, Mr. Thornton said. Jessica rolled her eyes. When a servo goes bad, Mr. Thornton continued, it's usually because of one of seven problems we discussed yesterday. Does anyone want to give us a review of... He pointed at Cindy when her hand shot up. Contamination, like from oil or coolant. Bad bearings. Electrical degrade... Uh, degrade... Degradation. Sorry. Poor installation, like the belts are too tight or couplings are worn out, a bad power supply or drive, damaged cables or overload. Good, Mr Thornton said. So this dog, he set the animatronic dog on his desk, has a bad servo. Cindy, you and Mindy can take this. Cindy and Mindy clapped their hands like five-year-olds. Mr Thornton grinned at a spot above their heads and set the dog on the table in front of them. Mr Thornton turned to the cart and grabbed the orangutan, a goat and a cat. More servo issues with these. Let's see who Mr Thornton parceled out the robotic animals. Brittany leaned close to Jessica and whispered, Do you want to work on a servo problem? Jessica shrugged. Whatever. Mr Thornton returned to the front of the class after handing out several of the mechanical animals. Although servos have a lot of pros in terms of their functionality, Mr Thornton said, stopping by the cart, There can be noise issues with, he reached out and grabbed the animatronic flamingo. He activated it, and when it moved its legs, the mechanism screeched. Mr Thornton turned it off. Pneumatic setups, by comparison, are fairly quiet, and he got up and approached a cart. 
wrestling with the end exoskeletons and human-shaped animatronics, Mr. Thornton unburied the pig at the bottom of what was left of the pile. Now that it was laying on its back on the cart, alone, Jessica could clearly see the pig's pink pot belly, stubby legs, and sweetly smiling face. The mechanical pig was old. Jessica could see glinting silver showing through the pig's pink felt layer here and there. Mr. Thornton gestured at the prone pig. Meet Rosie Porkchop. Rosie has a pneumatic system, which means she can lift a lot more weight than her fellow... She has a lot of pressure pumping through her lines, so she has quite a bit of potential. But her programming is... Obviously she's too heavy to move, except on this cart. Whoever gets her will have to come back in the evenings to work on her, so... Jessica nudged Brittany and hissed, Don't look at him. They'd already had to do one after hours project this year, and she didn't want to... Jessica and Brittany, you two get Rosie. Jessica and Brittany groaned in unison. Now let's get the rest of these past, Mr. Thornton said. Brittany whispered to Jessica, Seriously? We'll have to come back here this evening and work on a pig? Jessica rolled her eyes. Maybe she didn't like robotics class after all. When Jessica and Brittany returned to the robotics classroom after cheerleading practice, freshly showered and once again wearing their school outfits, they found Mr. Thornton at his desk and Rosie on the cart by herself at the back of the room. Mr. Thornton looked up and gazed just past Jessica's shoulder. There you are. I put Rosie at the back for you to work. Sorry, she's too big to remove from the school, but... I had to assign her to a team I could trust to stay after hours so I could get administrative approval for you to be in here for... He waved a hand towards Rosie. She's all yours. Jessica and Brittany exchanged a glance, sighed in unison, and went back to the and went to the back of the class. Together they sat down on their leather backpacks. Jessica reached into hers, uh, grabbed her lip gloss and touched up her lips. Brittany did the same. They stood together and looked at the pig. Uh, girls, Mr. Thornton called out. They turned. He waved a thin stack of papers at them. Here are some specs that came with Rosie when she... You'll want to look at them. She's not your typical animatronic, and she has a characteristic that is important for you. Jessica strode over and took the papers. We'll read everything, like, super carefully, she said. Mr. Thornton nodded. I'll be here for a little while longer if you have any questions for... Thanks, Mr. Thornton. Jessica returned to Brittany and dropped the papers on the table next to Rosie. Neither girl looked at him. Uh, they returned to looking at the pig. It's so, like, big, Brittany said. She sighed. Jessica nodded. She glared at the huge pig. The sound of dual giggles suddenly burst into the room behind Jessica and Brittany. They turned and watched Cindy and Mindy skip over to Mr. Thornton. Mindy gra carried the dog animatronic they were working on. What? Did they get, like, a small one? Brittany asked. Jessica shook her head. She watched the little brats chatter with Mr. Thornton. Then she turned and looked at Rosie. She looked back at the brats and then back to Rosie. She grinned and nudged Brittany. Picture this, Jessica whispered. She held her hands out in front of her like she was framing a screen. Little Mindy and Cindy, she jerked her head to indicate the two girls who were still talking with the teacher, are walking into the homecoming dance like they're all there. They're like, we don't care if anyone likes us, we like ourselves. In a continued whisper, she mimicked Mindy's chipmunk voice. Brittany made a face and nodded. And along comes our new BFF Rosie Porkchop, large, large and in charge. Jessica held out her arms to indicate the animatronic pig's size. <gasps> no, I know what's going to happen. Mindy and Cindy are going to be combined. Possibly. I reckon they're going to they're going to um put Mindy and Cindy together in like the pig suit or something. And then they I don't know. I I have no idea. <laughs> Jessica held out her arms to indicate the animatronic pig's size. She's been programmed by us, of course, to walk right up to those little two twerps, knock them down, and, she grinned, sit on them. Brittany laughed loudly, and Jessica shushed her. Brittany covered her mouth, then hugged Jessica. That's brilliant, she whispered. Is that the task we'll give her, like, for our project? Jessica rolled her eyes. We should probably have her do something that won't get us in trouble, don't you think? Brittany blushed and nodded. But this might be more fun than I thought it was going to be. Jessica said. For sure, Brittany agreed. Jessica opened her backpack and pulled out her laptop. I don't think... 
I don't think this should take very long. We just need to download her command software and go over it until we find out her glitch. And then we can tweak it to do whatever we want her to do. Brittany nodded, but frowned. Um, do you know, like, we're stuck at programming, right? Jessica shrugged. Yeah, but that would give us a nice alibi later. We can say we have no idea what went wrong with the programming, what made Rosie go crazy and knock him over, or spill punch on them or whatever. And besides, it's the complicated programming stuff we always get wrong. This is just basic programming of voice commands, right? She pulled up a seat and placed it next to Rosie's front end. Sitting with her legs perfectly crossed, Jessica lifted the flap that hid Rosie's controls. First, we need to create the uplink, and then she pressed a button. A soft puff, followed by a series of metallic clicks and snaps that preceded a louder whoosh, and both girls jumped when Rosie's lower belly popped open. What did you do? Is she going to, like, have babies? <laughs> Jessica laughed, but then she shrugged. What if there were animatronic piglets inside Rosie, even with the mechanisms that uh, she must have had inside her exoskeleton? Rosie certainly was big enough to store at least a dozen of them, if not more. After exchanging a glance, Jessica and Brittany both bent over to peer into Rosie's, Rosie's belly. Expecting to see a full system of hydraulics and possibly a few baby pigs, Jessica raised her eyebrow when she saw that Rosie's belly was, for the most part, empty. A network of metal gears, prongs and sharp looking rods, presumably powered by hydraulics, lined the interior wall of the pig's belly, but the vast majority of the cavernous space was totally open and big enough to hold a person, maybe two at most. Jessica stared into Rosie Porkchop's depths. She grinned and leaned back. Glancing up at Mr Thornton, who was still focused on his laptop, Jessica tugged on Brittany's hand. Brittany turned to look at Jessica. I have an even better idea than my original one. Jessica whispered. What? Brittany whispered back. Jessica hummed as she picked up the papers Mr Thornton had handed her and began to skim through them. Brittany looked over her shoulder. Flipping pages, Jessica reached a section titled General Operation. Under that was a paragraph in bold. Rosie Porkchop is a dual-purpose animatronic. The system can be engaged in traditional animatronic mode and also in human interface or suit mode, i.e. Rosie can be worn like a suit. Ah, so it, this, this is going to tell us about spring locks, I bet. There was more, but Jessica's gaze flicked down the page to the word warning, which was followed by a paragraph of bold red writing. Jessica quickly read through it. Rosie Porkchop can train spring locks. Oh, yes! <laughs> Woo! Yes, we've got a story about spring locks. Okay, we haven't had this since, um, we haven't had this since, uh, the new kid, right? We haven't had spring locks. Okay. Rosie Porkchop contains spring locks. Spring locks engage to allow Rosie Porkchop to function autonomously in animatronic mode. When engaged, metal components fill the entire interior of the animatronic. Rosie Porkchop can also be worn as a suit. This is called human interface mode. When Rosie Porkchop is in human interface mode, the spring locks disengage and retract into Rosie's endoskeleton. Do not switch modes while Rosie Porkchop is occupied. Sharp components of the spring lock system can cause serious bodily harm. That is a very important paragraph in this story. That tells us a lot, actually. Because we haven't seen, like, the inner... Like, obviously, we assume that's how it worked, but we haven't seen the inner, like, the science of the, uh, the spring locks and stuff and how, how it works properly. Wow, okay, we got some spring lock stuff. I'm so excited for this story now. She grinned and looked at Brittany. Guess what? What? Rosie can be occupied. So? Jessica didn't answer. She quickly glanced through Rosie's upload instructions. While she did that, Cindy and Mindy called out, Bye, Mr. Thornton. Jessica and Brittany turned to watch the little redhead skip out the classroom. Jessica glanced at Mr. Thornton. His gaze was on his laptop. Jessica dropped the papers, grabbed Brittany's hand and pulled her close. She whispered, So forget what I said before. I have a better idea. Oh no, they're going to put them in the suit and then spring lock them. Oh no. What? Jessica glanced again at Mr. Thornton. He was still concentrating on his computer. Even so, she turned her back and kept her voice low. Rosie's pneumatic system powers the trapdoor, and it's designed to be a hermetic seal. Brittany frowned a question. You know, those seals that keep in anything. Oh, right. 
The instruction said something about Rosie as a container for something. She waved her hand. I don't know. I didn't read it closely, but here's what I'm thinking. She scooted her chair closer to Brittany's. Those two little snots think that they can come to the homecoming dance. Well, they're coming all right, but not in their ruffled little dresses. They're coming in her. She pointed at Rosie Porkchop, specifically at Rosie's gaping belly. Brittany looked at Rosie's empty stomach and slowly started to grin. We're going to stick them in there? Jessica shook her head. We aren't. We'll have Rosie do it. It'll serve them right. They'll be all like, we'll do everything together from inside Rosie pork chop. Oh, that's like inspired, Brittany said. I know, right? Brittany nodded, her eyes bright. This is going to be so savage. Jessica grinned. All we have to do is program Rosie to grab the little snuts and put them in her belly. Once they're in, this door will close. She pointed to the pink door that hung open under Rosie's belly. She tapped it. See, it has the soft sealed fabric stuff on the outside, but it's hard metal on the inside. Once it's locked and sealed, they won't be able to get out. She grinned. They'll be trapped together. Brittany nodded again. I love it. Jessica smiled. Good, me too. She sighed. There's just one problem. What? It's going to take us a while. Jessica reached into Rosie's control panel and pulled out a clump of wires. How about I just get the uplink going and then we'll have to... Then we could go have burgers with the guys. After that, we'll come back here and spend the evening programming Rosie. Okay. Jessica opened her laptop and connected the upload wire. She handed another wire to Brittany. Plug that into the wall. I guess she has to charge too. Brittany nodded and dutifully plugged in the pig. Then she watched Jessica create an uplink with Rosie. Jessica noticed Brittany examining her nails again. Then she saw... Then saw her friend stand to get her backpack. Brittany snapped her fingers and sat back down. What? Jessica asked. When I reached for my backpack, I had an idea. Instead of just... She lowered her voice to whisper. Trapping them. Why don't we program Rosie to serve us while they're stuck inside? That will make Mindy and Cindy like our own ladies' maid. They can be our servant, like fetching things for us and waiting on us. Like royalty, Jessica said, beaming. You're so good. Brittany took a bow. She looked at Mr. Thornton, who had stood up at his desk. Hurry up and get everything going. I can't wait to do this. Me neither. Jessica grinned and returned to her task. This was why she loved Brittany so much. She and Jessica had, like, shared thoughts. They always agreed, and one of them nearly always could take the other's idea and make it better. They made an unstoppable team. Jessica tapped a couple keys and got the upload started. Then she grabbed her backpack and headed towards the door. Brittany followed her. Because robotics was in the mostly deserted wing that could be locked off from the rest of the school, Mr. Thornton had gotten permission from the principal to let some of his students come in after hours to work on projects. They used an exterior door that gave them access to this wing only. Before they reached the door, Jessica called out, Mr. Thornton. Hmm? He didn't look up from his computer. We've got Rosie's upload going. We're going to come back later to work on her. Can we have the after hours key? Sounds good. Hmm? Oh, sure. Yes. Mr. Thornton pulled the key from his desk drawer. Jessica took the key from their teacher and the girls headed to the classroom door. Bye, Mr. Thornton. They called in unison as they left. Oh, goodbye. He called after them. As they walked away, Brittany said, He said goodbye, not bye. Jessica glanced at her friend. So? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. I guess it just sounds like kind of final, you know? Jessica grinned and hugged Brittany. You slay me. That was weird. <laughs> Jessica and Brittany on Derek's and Roman's arms crossed to the crowded parking lot in front of Burger Dom, a local fast food hangout known for the best burgers in the country and even better milkshakes. If it wasn't for the food, Jessica wouldn't have been caught dead in the place. It was housed in a bright orange building shaped like a hamburger bun. How cliche could you get? But it was in the place to be after school. The parking lot was filled with cars, bicycles and big groups of students on foot. At least three different radios played, creating a musical war between rap, pop and country. A few junior girls were dancing at the edge of the lot. Jessica recognised most of her classmates along with, uh, among, the uh, yeah, among the crowd and many of them were watching the royal couples head toward the restaurant's lobby. Because the pavement was uneven, Jessica shifted her gaze to her feet. She wasn't about to trip and put a hitch in her perfect glide. 
Her downcast attention, however, didn't warn her of other potential hazards. Suddenly, a bicycle swept past Jessica, its back wheels barely missing her left toes. She faltered, and if it hadn't been for Derek's arm, which she quickly clutched with all her strength, she would have lost her balance. Watch where you're going, Derek bellowed at the cyclist. At the bicy- bi- bicyclist? Is that a word? I- I've never seen that word, at the cyclist. Jessica looked up to see who, in- who had nearly run over her toes, and she sighed dramatically. Of course, she muttered. What, babe? Derek asked. Jessica smiled up at him. She didn't want to get into it, so she just said, Eighth graders? Yeah, tell me about it. They're everywhere. Jessica glanced at Brittany, who gave Jessica a quick smile. She'd also noticed that the kid on the bike had been Mindy. Jessica was sure Brittany was thinking the same thing. It wouldn't be long before they got payback. Oh man, Derek said as he pushed open Bergadom's double glass doors. Look at the line. This is worse than Friday nights after a game. Jessica noted the semi-line-shaped cluster of students pressing into the lobby, waiting their turn to order. Inhaling the smells of onions, french fries, and charbroiled burgers, she scanned the tables in the small dining area. Every one of the orange-topped metal tables was occupied, every dark blue booth was was, was jammed with kids, and half of them, she couldn't help but notice, were munchkins, clearly 7th and 8th graders. It's bad enough they're in our school, she said. But now they're taking over the hangouts too. I know, right? Brittany said. It was amazing that Brittany had even heard Jessica. The noise level in the place was more rock concert than restaurant. Jessica threw back her hair and lifted her chin. Excuse me, she said loud enough to prompt the kids in front of her to turn. She stepped toward them. You need to let me by. She said it in the same tone her mother used uh, for everyone who worked for her. It was a cross between imperious and soothing. Just the right combination to make a person feel like not only was it impossible for them to say no, but they'd feel better after saying yes. The kids parted and Jessica swept through the opening. When she reached the next barrier of kids, she repeated the process. In under 20 seconds, she stood at the shiny silver counter in front of a kitchen filled with scurrying orange and blue clad losers who were too poor or too ugly to get a decent job. More such losers stood behind two cash registers. One of those wore a name tag that read Irwin. Irwin was ringing up a order, but he glanced over at Jessica and grinned at her. Hey, Irwin, she said in a tone that suggested she couldn't possibly be happier to see anyone. You're racking the orange and blue today. Irwin, a skinny guy with bad skin and worse teeth, flushed. Hi, Jessica, he said as he counted out change to the threesome in front of his register. God, threesome. (laughs) As soon as Irwin closed his register and the three kids clutching an orange 17 started to move aside, Jessica stepped in front of the kids in line. Could you get us our usual, Irwin? She turned and gestured toward Derek, Brittany and Roman who hadn't yet made it through the throng. Jessica secretly revealed in her superior crowd parting skills, Brittany was pretty good at getting a room to do her bidding, but she couldn't compete with Jessica. Irwin glanced around and frowned. Um, he began. I know they were next, Jessica gestured at the kids breathing on her neck. Like, literally. Uh, oh, that wasn't her saying it. One of the girls was chewing grape gum, and not only was her hot breath on Jessica's skin, the the grape smell was uh, strong enough to dominate the grill smells. But here we are in such a rush with, like, the homecoming duties and stuff. If you could just... She flipped her hair and locked her blue eyes on Irwin's pale brown ones. He shrugged and tapped in the order. One of the boys behind Jessica protested, Dude! <laughs> Irwin tried to reassure him. This will take a second. Grape gum girl, a voyable player whose name Jessica couldn't remember, she didn't have to remember it, the girl wasn't anyone worth bothering about, sighed loudly, exhaling spitty gum breath into Jessica's hair. She'd have to go home and shower before she and Brittany went back to school to start programming Rosie Porkchop. Thanks so much, Irwin, Jessica said. She took money from her backpack and paid for the food. She knew Derek would reimburse her immediately. He never wanted her to pay for anything. That's the guy's job, he always said. It was so sweet. Irwin took her money, gave her change, and handed her an orange plastic 18. She flashed him a smile, designed to leave him feeling like he was special, even though he clearly wasn't. Then she turned. Grape gum girl gave Jessica a dirty look. Jessica leaned close to her ear. 
Get over it. And you might want to invest in some tweezers. Your eyebrows are growing together. Jessica walked away and didn't care even a little that Grapegum Girl was glaring at her back. Jessica could feel it, but it so didn't matter. When Jessica returned to Brittany, Derek and Roman, she handed Derek the 18. Here you go. Once you get the food, let's eat in your convertible. It's way too crazy in here. Sure babe, way to rush the light. He pantomimed a defensive forward charging toward the quarterback. Jessica made a kissy face at him and then linked her arm through Brittany's. Let's let the boys handle the rabid crowd. Brittany nodded. For show. Sure. <laughs> oh. She and Jessica tossed their hair in unison and strode from the restaurant, their steps in perfect sync. It was after eight before Jessica and Brittany got back to the school. Between hanging out with the guys and then going home to shower and then taking time to redo their hair and makeup and decide what perfect programming outfits were, it just took a while before they could return. Letting themselves in the back door of the deserted wing, they stood in the long, quiet hallway and contemplated the hundred feet or so they had to go to reach the classroom. The hallway was only dimly lit by emergency lights, which put the bare tan walls, the scuffed beige linoleum floor, and the lockers lining the hall in gloomy shadows. The lockers in this part of the school weren't used, at least not officially. Jessica knew that some of the kids left messages for each other in the lockers. She couldn't help but wonder what else might be hidden in them. Because of the empty lockers and equally bare walls and floors, all sounds seemed amplified. Jessica's and Brittany's breathing sounded like it was coming from 20 girls instead of two. It's so, like, creepy in here when no one's around, Brittany said. Her voice echoed down the hall. You said that last time we had to stay late, Jessica reminded her, bumping shoulders with Brittany. Yeah, I probably did, but it's still true. Yeah, Jessica turned and checked her to be sure. The outer door locked behind them. When it clicked into place, she nodded, we're locked in. Yeah, but like, with who? Brittany asked, visibly shivering. You know it wouldn't be hard for some perv to sneak into school during the day and then hide and wait until after everyone else has gone and Jessica smacked Brittany's arm. Stop it, you're gonna freak me out too. She rubbed her arms, which were now covered with prickly hairs. Sorry. Jessica took Brittany's wrist. Come on, we should have brought the guys, Brittany said. Then we wouldn't get anything done, Jessica pointed out. True. Let's go. Once we're in the classroom, we'll barricade the door like we did last time, if, it's, if it'll make you feel better. Me? You've got the goosebumps too, Brittany accused. Okay, so I don't like it in here either. Brittany tugged on Jessica's arm. Let's hurry. Their footsteps echoing around them, Jessica and Brittany hurried down the hall. Neither com commented when they both occasionally checked over their shoulders. Jessica was relieved when they reached the robotics classroom and shoved the door open. Brittany scrabbled for the light switch before the door could swing shut. The previous time they'd been in after hours, they discovered that the classroom door didn't lock. Some discussion had ensued about whether to get over their paranoia or just give in to it. The conversation had resulted in a give in to it strategy, shoving one of the classroom tables in front of the door. This time, they didn't waste time with discussion. Without speaking, they moved together to the nearest table and shoved it over to block the door. Then they both turned, exhaled and surveyed the room. The overhead fluorescent lights in the classroom did relieve some of the creep factor of being in the deserted wing. However, that relief was countered by the eerie presence of all the robotic parts in the room. Metal arms and heads and disembodied torsos weren't exactly uh, comforting decor. Jessica and Brittany went to the back of the room where, Lo where Rosie still lay on her cart. Hooked up to both the wall and the laptop, it looked like she was in intensive care or something. At this point, if Rosie were to move, Jessica would have run screaming from the room. Uh, Jessica, Brittany said. Jessica shook her head. Sorry, you've got me your spoot now. Brittany put an arm around her friend. Come on, let's go and try out our new lip gloss. That'll make us feel better. Jessica nodded. On their way over to the school, they'd stopped at the store to get some munchies in case they were here a while. Their favourite celeb had just released a new lip gloss that caught their eye, of course. They had to buy some. Brittany pulled Jessica down into a chair next to the one she settled on. The girls applied their gloss, pink for Brittany, red for Jessica, and looked at each other. Gorgeous, Jessica said. Brittany grinned. I know, right? Jessica took a deep breath and reached for her computer, which was just where she'd left it. Okay, she said. Let's see if we're good to go. She tapped the key to take the computer out of sleep mode and looked at the screen. 
According to the display, the upload was complete. Uh, Jessica began tapping at keys. Do you, like, know what you're doing? Brittany asked. Jessica laughed. Probably not, but how hard can it be? She gestured at the screen. See? Rosie's system is run by a software program that can't be modified. She frowned at the screen for a few minutes, reading the lines of code that were already there. Brittany leaned in and read, and read over Jessica's shoulder. It looks like you just input the, uh, the descriptive phrases, like that one. She pointed to the line 41 of the code, then read what came after the line number. Reaches out number or hashtag sev or hash. It's, it's actually called a hash. It's not called a hashtag. It's called a hashtag on Twitter, but it, it, the symbol is a hash. Sorry, fun fact for those zone. Uh, reaches out hash 7v800. I think it assigns a number to the plain word commands. I think you're right, Jessica said, twirling a lock of super soft hair around her index finger. We just need to make a list of the commands we want the program we want to program into Rosie, and then we can assign the right numbers to them and input them. Exactly right, Brittany said. Jessica peered at the code. Okay, realistically, we're probably limited in what we have, we, what we can have Rosie to do. Uh, but how about we make a wish list, then see what we can do? Brittany nodded. Great idea. Jessica minimized the software screen and opened a blank doc. Okay, so what do we want our little servants to do for us? She grinned. Well, it'd be nice if we never had to get something for ourselves. Brittany leaned back in her chair. The chair creaked, which sent a tremor down Jessica's spine. She ignored it. So basically the command would be fetch, Jessica said, laughing. Ah, okay. The fact that she's laughing here is like... That's a weird detail. That's very, that's a weird line. So basically the command would be fetch. Jessica said laughing. Why would that be funny? Unless she knew about the fetch animatronic. I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking too deeply into this. I think I am actually. But I, I don't know. It's weird that Jessica is laughing here. I don't know. It's weird. Brittany broke down too. Yeah, maybe just for fun, we could do roll over and play dead. Yeah, see? Like, they're, they're talking about a dog. Uh, although I guess a, a basic command for a dog is fetch and roll over and play. Yeah, okay. It's, it's, it's got nothing to do with fetch the dog, but it, it, it's, it's in the commands that a dog does, and that's why she's laughing. Okay, that makes more sense. Jessica threw her head back and guffawed. Oh my gosh, stop it. That's too good. She typed in her document, roll over, play dead. Jessica laughed harder. This makes me think of Titan. If he was here, he'd be giving you five. Brittany grinned at Jessica. They should do that too. Jessica nodded enthusiastically. They should do all of Titan's tricks. Spin, Brittany said. She grinned. And bow. You know, sorry I keep pausing, but I, f I really feel like they're going to mess up the code for this and then it's going to do something else that they don't want it to do. Because they're, they're not going to be professional coders or whatever, right? They're not actually good mechanics because they're, they're these popular kids at school. Anyway. Okay, seriously though, Jessica said. This is all good for laughs, but what could they do that would be really helpful? Brittany tapped her lowered teeth as she pondered. Carry our bags, polish our nails, especially our toenails, dry our hair, brush our hair, style our hair. But first, Rosie has to, like, grab those little freaks, pick them up, and put them inside her belly. Jessica tapped the keys on her computer, but then reached for the papers Mr. Thornton had handed her earlier. What's up? Brittany asked. Jessica waved her off, trying to figure out how he could get Rosie to recognise and make a beeline for the two brats first thing tomorrow. After skimming through all the possible commands, she noticed a section called Vocoder System. Apparently, Rosie's vocoder system, which allowed her to interpret spoken commands, could also differentiate between the voices of adults and children. She was currently programmed to approach children and avoid adults. Makes sense for a kiddie animatronic, she guessed. Jessica smiled. Cindy's and Mindy's chirping kid voices hadn't dropped yet, so Rosie would be sure to zero in on it to zero in on them. Jessica just had to take the code one step further for Rosie to approach, then grab kids. As she started typing, a noise from the front of the classroom spun her around. What was that? Brittany had spun too. She was 
staring wide-eyed toward Mr. Thornton's desk. I saw something move. Brittany hissed. I thought I did too. Jessica whispered back. Both girls stood, holding hands. They uh, took a tentative step toward the front of the classroom. The second they did, something shifted on Mr. Thornton's desk. They both jumped back. What was that? Brittany yelped. Jessica shook her head and frowned. She looked around the classroom. It felt like all the robot eyes and the robot heads were watching them. She tugged on Brittany's hand and moved forward again. Brittany pulled free to grab a robotic arm off of one of the pegboards. Good thinking, Jessica said. I know, right? Brittany nodded several times. They crept forward together until a click stopped them. Jessica cocked her head, listening. She heard a fluttery sound like a bird flapping its wings. Brittany raised the robotic alarm. Uh, ro Brittany raised the robotic arm, readying for a fight. Jessica shook her head, but she moved forward again, looking hard at Mr. Thornton's desk. Brittany was right at her side. Suddenly, something shot out from behind Mr. Thornton's desk and skittered over the floor toward them. Jessica screamed. Brittany uh, screamed too, but she almost. But she also charged. Running forward, still screaming, she brought down the robotic arm and slammed it into the ground. The impact made a metallic crack. No, not into the ground, into something on the ground. Brittany raised the arm and brought it down again. Another metallic crack. What is it? Jessica asked. Brittany stepped back, robotic arm still poised for action. She looked down and she didn't wield, uh, wield the arm again. So Jessica stepped up beside her. It looks like a rat, Brittany said. Yeah, if rats were made of metal. Jessica and Brittany looked at each other. A robotic rat? Brittany asked. They looked back at it. The, a flexible steel cable originating uh, at the back of the robotic rat twitched. Brittany stumped on it. The cable stopped moving. Brittany looked at Jessica, frowned, and then looked around the room. Do you, like, think anything else is going to come to life? Uh, besides Rosie, I hope not. Jessica gazed at the robotic parts on the pegboards warily. A chill slithered through her body. She shook it off. Come on, let's do this so we can get out of here. For show. Sure. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I had to say that again, Brittany said. Jessica sat down at the back table again and peered at her computer screen. Where was I? Brittany sat down beside Jessica, still holding tight to the robotic arm. You were putting in the grab the kid commands, Brittany said. Right. Jessica started typing again. When she finished, she asked, Okay, what else do we want them to do? Well, they seem pretty brainy. I wonder if their, like, brain power could, um, interface with Rosie's AI. Could they do homework for us? Hmm, Jessica said. That would be rad, but I think it would take a programmer better than me to code that. Brittany sighed. Yeah, just thought I'd throw it out there. I like it. Maybe it's something we can add later. We could talk one of the computer nerds into helping us. Oh, that's brilliant, Brittany said. So, back to everyday commands. Make your smoothie. Good one, Jessica typed. And packing your lunch. She, sh she typed more. Right, Brittany said. What about cooking? Jessica screwed up her face in thought and then started typing. Brittany leaned over and watched. Oh, basic cooking commands. Good thinking. It's something we'll have to do later, but I figured we should put it on the list. Jessica sat back. Okay, well, I should probably start coding for Rosie to pick up the girls and put them in her belly. Then I'll do the commands for getting things and bringing them to us. She started typing. Brittany pointed at the computer screen. I think you got that backward. Isn't that the code for the kids, not the adults? Jessica looked and shook her head. Good eye. Sorry, blunt moment. They looked at each other and laughed. Jessica returned to typing. The programming was a lot harder than she thought it would be, and after an hour or so, her eyes were tired. She reached up and rubbed the back of her neck and shrugged her shoulders toward her ears. I'd offer to take over for a while, Brittany said. But you know I totally suck at programming. Jessica nodded. It's okay. Brittany shoved her, her chair back. But I could rub your shoulders for you. Jessica smiled. That'd be great. Thanks. Brittany affected a British lady's maid accent. You're welcome, my lady. She started rubbing Jessica's shoulders. Then she stopped. We should have Rosie call us Milady. Jessica grinned. That's a great idea. She squinted at the screen and started typing. Jessica worked on Rosie's code for three more hours. It was after midnight when she typed in the last of the code and sat back. Okay, she said. If we did this right, 
These commands should have been downloading into Rosie as we created them. All we need to do now is disconnect her, unplug her from the wall and activate her. Unplugging her computer. Jessica looked at Rosie's control panel. She's fully charged. I think if we activate her now, she'll be good to go in the morning. Then she can go grab Cindy and Mindy when they get here for their early workshop time. We'll have to be sure we get here on time so we can see that, Brittany said. She looked at her gold watch. We won't have much time for beauty sleep. We don't need much beauty sleep, Jessica said. They laughed. In perfect synchronized motion, they both got out of their, out their lip gloss and freshened up their lips, then stood up from the table. Go ahead and activate her, Jessica said to Brittany. Brittany grinned and reached behind Rosie's neck. She flipped a switch. As soon, as soon as she did, the cover to Rosie's control panel closed. With a click and a whir, Rosie blinked her eyes. Her head swiveled this way and that. Her gaze landed on Jessica. She blinked again and turned to look at Brittany. Another click sounded from inside Rosie and she rose up off the cart. Once she was off the cart, she stood, she stood still looking at Brittany. What's she doing? Brittany asked. Jessica shook her head. Maybe she's just getting ready. She shoved her laptop back into her backpack and started to zip up the pack. Before Jessica could close her backpack, Rosie reached out and grabbed Brittany by her shoulders. Brittany screamed, Ow! What's she doing? Jessica turned toward Rosie and her friend and she stared in disbelief. Rosie's pink hands were full on clamped down on Brittany's right bicep. Brittany tried to wrench herself free of Rosie's grasp, but that just resulted in Rosie's metal fingers, padded only slightly by her pink felt, digging in deeper. They cut through Brittany's bare skin, drawing blood. Oh my god. Jessica watched in horror as the blood trickled down to Brittany's elbow and dripped onto her shirt. Brittany cried out, Jessica, do something! Brittany tried to reach with her free arm to deactivate Rosie, but before she could, Rosie's hydraulic-driven strength yanked Brittany off her feet and twirled her upside down. Rosie's belly access door dropped open with a hiss, and Rosie lifted Brittany out and away from her belly, so Brittany was hovering in the air, parallel to the floor. While Jessica was trying to figure out why Rosie was performing what looked like an acrobatic move, she hadn't programmed that. Rosie began shoving Brittany through the access door and into Rosie's belly. Stop it! Jessica screamed at Rosie. She grabbed Brittany around the waist and tried to pull her out of the animatronic pig's grasp. What had gone wrong? What was Rosie putting Brittany inside her stomach cavity? Or why was Rosie putting Brittany inside her stomach cavity? Jessica had just seconds to think of these questions before Brittany screamed again. Putting aside her confusion and disbelief, Jessica yanked harder. Brittany's screams became shriller, but otherwise Jessica's efforts had no effect. Rosie was relentlessly stuffing Brittany into her stomach. Jessica couldn't, couldn't stop it. Brittany went into the belly cavity feet first, and she didn't go quietly or easily. Kicking her legs madly, Brittany shrieked at the top of her lungs as she was stuffed into uh, Rosie's open stomach. Whoa! Between shill screams, Brittany yelled, Turn her off! Turn her off! I have an idea. I have an idea for a theory. And I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to say it right now. What if... What if... Because I, I personally think that the fun time animatronics may have been some of the first animatronics. Uh, that, that was also based off of, like, the faz facts, right? Because William Afton... Uh, built some of the first animatronics, etc. Uh, and I, I think the fun times were some of the first animatronics. What if the fun times are made, are, are springlock animatronics? What if they're springlock animatronics? And um, because like they, they have, because in this, Rosie has a, has like a chest cavity uh, and, and she's a springlock suit. And I feel like this is a massive parallel to like, to like Baby or Fun Time Freddy, for example. So what if this story is trying to tell us that the sister location animatronics are springlock suits, just like the springlock suit that we see in night four in sister location? Oh, what if that is it? I feel like that might be it. Wow, okay. Well, we'll have to read further to see if it is more of a uh, sister location kind of, kind of esque um, story.